Hello, we are back. We are going to be reading another day of our book club, Be Holy for I Am Holy, The Complete Visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich. And today we are going to be seeing her vision and reading The Journey to the Temple. I saw Joaquin, Anne, and their eldest daughter busy during the night packing and preparing for a journey. A lamp with several wicks was burning, and I saw Mary Healy busily going about with the light. Some days before, Joaquin had sent his servants up to the temple with offering the cattle, five of the finest of every kind. They made a nice herd. Now he saddled two of the beasts of burden and loaded them with all kinds of baggage, clothes for the child and presents for the temple. A broad package was laid on the back of each beast and formed a comfortable seat. The baggage was all in bundles. On both sides of one of the beasts, platter-shaped baskets were with arched covers were fastened. In them were birds as large as partridges. There were also oval baskets containing fruit. A cover with heavy tassels was thrown over the whole load. Two of the priests were still present. One was very old. He wore a cap pointed on the forehead and with lappets over the ears. His upper garment was shorter than the under one, and over it was a kind of stole. He had much to do with the child. The other priest was younger. I saw also two boys present. They were not human. They appeared there supernaturally and with a spiritual signification. They carried long standard rolls upon staffs furnished with knobs uh, at both ends. The larger of the two boys came to me with a standard unfurled red and explained it to me. The writing appeared entirely strange to me. The single golden letters all inverted. One letter represented a whole word. The language sounded unfamiliar, but I understood it all the same. He showed me in his role the passage referring to the burning thorn bush of Moses. He explained to me how the thorn bush burned and yet was not consumed. So now was the child Mary inflamed with the fire of the Holy Spirit, but in her humility she knew nothing of it. It signifies also the divinity and humanity in Jesus and how God's fire united with the child Mary. The putting off of the shoes, he explained thus, the law will now be fulfilled. The veil is withdrawn and the essence appears. By the little standard on his staff was signified, as he told me, that Mary now began her course her career to become the mother of the Redeemer. The other boy seemed to be playing with his standard. He jumped about and ran around with it. By this was signified Mary's innocence. The great promise is to be fulfilled in her, rests upon her, and yet she plays like a child in this holy destiny. I cannot express the loveliness of those boys. They were different from all other presents, and those later did not appear to see them. There were beside Anne about six female relatives with their children and some men who accompanied them. Jelkin guided the beast upon which the child Mary sometimes rode. He carried a light for it and still dark when they set out, for it was still dark when it set out. A servant led the other. The little procession was also accompanied by the other apparitions of the prophets. As Mary hastened from the house, they pointed out to me a place in their roles 
wherein it was declared that although the temple was indeed magnificent, yet Mary contained in herself still greater magnificence. Mary wore a little yellowish gown and the large veil so fastened around her that her arms could rest in it. When she rode, the prophet boys followed behind her, but when she walked, they were at her side, singing the 44 and 49. I knew that the same would be sung at her reception in the temple. The child Mary saw those boys, but she saw nothing about it. She was perfectly silent, wholly recollected in self. The journey was difficult over mountain and valley. In the later lay chilling mist and dew. Once I saw the travelers resting at the fountain under some balsam trees and again stopping overnight at an inn at the foot of the mountain. And Yes. Yeah. Twelve leagues from Jerusalem, they came up at an inn with the herd that had been sent on in advance as an offering. And when it was just about starting anew, Joachim was well known here and was quite at home. When taking his offerings up to Jerusalem, he had always stopped at this inn. And when from his penitential stay among the shepherds, he returned to Nazareth, he had also put up here. I again saw the holy travelers in the city of Betharon, six leagues from Jer Jerusalem. They had crossed a rivulet. Uh, they had crossed a rivulet, had passed Gophna and Azenserra, and were still distant about two leagues from it, a road whence Jerusalem could be descried. At Betharon, they put up a Levitical school. Relatives of Joachim and Anne from Nazareth, Sephorus and Zab 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 Zabalon, and the koan try around and the the koan try around had come hither with their daughters and there was quite a little festival in mary's honor she was conducted with many other children to a hall in which a special place had been prepared for her on an elevated seat like a throne she was then crowned the teachers questioned her and were stuck with all her answers mention was made of the wisdom of another maiden who not long since had returned from the temple to her home in gophna she was called susanna i think that it was her place mary was going to take in the temple susanna was then 15 later she joined the holy women that followed jesus oh susanna i didn't know there was a susanna mary rejoiced at being now so near to the temple joachim joachim embraced her weeping and saying i shall never see thee again during the repast mary went here and there Several times she reclined by Anne's side at table or stood behind her with her arm around her neck. On the following day, accompanied by the teacher of the Levitical school and his family, they started very early for Jerusalem. The young girls carried beautiful fruits and garments as presents for a child. It looked to me as if there was going to be a real feast in Jerusalem. The nearer they approached the holy city, the more eager and desirous became Mary. She generally ran on before her parents. I saw the arrival of the procession in Jerusalem and also beheld the roads and paths and buildings more distinctly than I had done for a very long for a long time. Jerusalem had a very singular looking city 
we must not represent it ourselves with its street thronged as the great cities of the present day. Many steep and hilly streets ran around behind the city walls from which no gates led. The houses lying high behind those walls faced the opposite side, for many parts of the city were built at subsequent periods, new ridges of hills being taken in accordingly. The old city walls, however, were always allowed to remain standing. Many of the deep valleys were spanned by massive stone arches. That's my friend Lynn. She's been texting me. Sorry. Um, uh, the old city walls were remained standing. Many of the deep valleys were spanned by massive stone arches. The courtyards and rooms of the house all opened toward the back of the building, the entrance only being on the street. The walls were summoned. I'm sorry. You can pause it. Um, yeah, let me pause it for just a moment because I have to do something real quick. We must not represent it to ourselves with its streets thronged at great cities of the present day. Many steep and hilly streets ran around the city walls from which no gates led. The houses lying high behind those walls faced the opposite side for many parts of the city were built at subsequent periods, new ridges of hills being taken in accordingly. The old city walls, however, were allowed to remain standing. Many of the deep valleys were spanned by massive stone. arches the courtyards and rooms of the houses all opened toward the back of the building the entrance only being on the street the walls were surmounted by terraces or balconies the houses were kept closed the great part of the time when the inhabitants had no affairs to call them to the public places of the city or to the temple they remained for the most part in their own houses and courts it was tolerably quiet on the streets excepting in the neighborhood of the markets and palaces where there was much going on to and fro of soldiers and travelers on certain days, at the time when all gathered in the temple for worship, the city in many localities was entirely deserted. On this account, and the seclusion of the people in their houses, Jesus and his disciples were enabled to go undisturbed through the solitary streets and deep valleys. Water was not plentiful in the city. One often sees high buildings to and from which it was conveyed also towers in which it was pumped there were very care they were very careful of water at the temple where such quantities were needed for washing and purifying the various vessels etc they had great engines for pumping it up there were numbers of shopkeepers and merchants in the city they had their booths all together in the markets and open squares so stood, for instance, not far from the sheep gate, many dealers in all kinds of gold trinkets and shining stones, their booths round and light and quite brown as if streaked with something pitch or resin, probably. Though light, they were very strong. They were carried on their businesses and under tents stretched from one to another. They exposed their different wares. There were also certain localities near the palaces, for instance, where there were more life in the streets, where it was more brisk. Old Rome was indeed more pleasantly situated. It was not so steep and its streets were more lively. On one side of the mountain upon which the temple was situated, the declivity was more gentle. Here, there were several streets upon terraces, and on top of the thick walls where some of the priests and servants of the temple dwelt as some laboring people who performed the lowest services, such as purifying the ditches wherein was thrown the offal of the cattle slaughtered for the temple. 
On the other side, the mountain was very steep and ditch quite black. Around the summit of the mountain was a huge, was a green ledge whereon the priests had all kinds of little gardens. Even in Christ's time, there was upon certain parts of the temple work constantly going on. There were quantities of ore in the mountain upon which stood the temple, and much was dug out and used in the building. Inside the meadow were numbers of smelting vaults and furnaces. I never felt at home in the temple, for I never could find it a place well suited for prayer. It was all so immensely solid, so massive, so high. The numerous courts were so narrow, dark, and obstructed by so many elevated platforms and seats that when the people were in it, it presented a somewhat frightful spectacle and even looked confined with its high massive walls and lofty, lofty pillars. The, the constant slaughtering going on, ugh, and the quantities of blood flowing in consequence, I found most repulsive. The words cannot express the wonderful order and cleanliness that reigned in everything connected with it. Oh, wow. I'm glad that part's over. Icky. Um, yeah, that's kind of like what we always pictured, right? Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing this book is giving me see Jeanette you've been studying this a long time at with the details I have not so this is actually giving me something I never had and you know I'm like you I have ADD and I am constantly going in a million directions and I have to be very very careful and 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 control myself my interests are so vast I start going all over the place so but the thing is that this is really helping me to hone in in Jesus's experience because I always think about what it must have been like as he traveled. You know, I think about little things like that. So this is really whether or not it's true. They're saying it's historically um, accurate and the church has has deemed that to allow her writings out there. So I feel very um uh, inclined to say, okay, I'm going to really look closely at this, which is hard for me. You know, I have to be really interested in something to look into detail. So, um, when they were talking about this, um, they were getting ready here. They are, um, not a poor family as we think of them all as poor, what we have understood from the apocryphal writings, those James that we looked at Mary's family was not uh, real poor, um, they could afford the things like we talked about the dyes and the inks for the dark blue. And now it makes more sense why Mary was always in blue. I thought, well, if they were so poor, why are they always depicting her just because they like it or, you know, but apparently reading this, it really makes it more clear. Um, so here they are getting ready, getting presents for the temple you see, like, you know, I think of people like Jean. Jean is always doing, doing, doing for others. She has ADD and she, but what she takes with her ADD is not her interest in books and stuff. Although she is very much a reader, her and I, we share that. She is a doer. Like she's out there volunteering. And I wish I had done that when I was young and, and, and not knowing who I was. And, you know, I really regret so much when I look at, you know, someone like Jean. I wish I'd known her when I was young. I hope my, my, it says my internet's unstable. I hope it's not showing up here. Um, you but, froze for a little bit, but then you came back right away. Oh, okay. So anyway, I wish Jean, I wish I was, I had been more like Jean younger. I was going in a hundred directions, but not charitable the way she's so, you know, she's so good anyway. So they're getting ready and they have, they have these beasts. Remember, they don't have cars. So like just picturing them getting ready and putting their gifts together and, and they have their little partridges and they travel with these animals to slaughter. And that's the hardest part for me. And then they describe the baskets, like all of this. I just, you know, I love reading and I love writing and I love old times. So I love hearing these little details of little baskets and, you know, those kind of things, the quaintness of all that. I love all that. 
So, um, and then hearing, you know, you and I love fabrics and hearing, I could picture his little lapette over his ears to keep the sand out. Remember, you have to look at yeah. the topography of where they lived and they have that over their ears. So sand is not blowing in their ears, you know? And then the upper garment's shorter than the under. Like I can picture all of this. And it's so important when you're reading deep things like this to try to picture it. It can be annoying, but can also be enriching. It's like it's like she's painting a picture with words. So you have to use your brain to, to do it. So it's really good for your brain, actually. As you get older, you lose that brain. So this is very good for our brains to read this book. Um, the, and so, and then they describe the other priest as younger, all of these little details, they're just so good. Um, and this is where I started, uh, and looking at Lynn, I always try to respond to Lynn. She's my good friend who lost her daughter. And, um, so I try to respond to her right away anyway. So, um, yeah, I missed a little bit of this, um, but I can see, I can just go over it. Um, Okay, so, oh, with this part, Mary inflamed with the fire of the Holy Spirit. I can't go over all of it, but I'm just going to go with this because I know Jeanette is concerned about a friend of hers. Uh, so we're trying. I'm try I'm sorry. I'm not going fast enough. No, no, you're good. You're good. I'm good. Take, okay. take your time. This is important. Okay. Um, Mary inflamed with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Remember, I was trying to get you to do Mrs. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um I am very much into fire. Remember, even though we're not supposed to look at astrology, I'm an I am an Aries and we're a fire sign. So fire. Um, I love Saint Catherine of Siena. You set the world on fire when you become your real self, or however she says it. Mm -hmm. So when they say Mary inflamed the fire of the Holy Spirit, um so now was the child Mary inflamed with the fire of the Holy spirit. Um, they did that blessing on her, just the, the previous thing that we read and she glowed, remember? So just like Pentecost, we're about to come up on in the church, the second most important, according to our Easter homily, we heard from the father over there at Nathalie's church that we went to on Easter morning. Um, so so I think of I it right away brought to mind that and the the Pentecost. Um, so but in her humility, remember the first step for our spiritual life is our humility because you know we're very proud people in you know, not just in America, but humans were very prideful. So, but in her humility, she knew nothing of it. She didn't know she had this flame. Everyone around, when they talk about this throne for her, I'm like this throne for this little three-year-old, you know what I mean? It's just like, but they all knew. And that's what I think is so surprising to me. You know, look what it says. The law, look, the fi the humanity the, here it is. It, sign it signifies also the divinity and humanity in Jesus and how God's fire united with the child Mary. You know, the Holy Spirit put Jesus in Mary. They were united and they were going to be united as holy spouses. So, you know, it's just so beautiful. The the putting off of the shoes, he explained, thus the law will now be fulfilled. Everything they did had significance. The veil is withdrawn. The essence appears by the little standard on his staff was signified. He told me that Mary now began her course, her career to become the mother of the redeemer, a little tiny child we're talking about. They're preparing her to be the mother of God. Like, you know, when you and she was only three and a half when she got not baptized, but I guess the presentation. Right. I and guess they called it the presentation at the temple, which we talked about yesterday. But when um but they did say that three and three months it was three years and three months, but she had the equivalent of a six year old, they said. Yeah. So that's why she understood things that seemed yeah. like so it only makes sense that God's going to pick a very intelligent woman. She had a lot to overcome and get through. I mean, it's she, 
I like, I don't think, oh, Mary's so intelligent. I see her as, you know, I'm trying to unite with Mary, that meek, mild, because my personality is so opposite. You know, you're my Mary. I know you don't see it that way, but you are my, because Mary brought us together with the rosary class, you know, so you help me explore my Mary. So in any case, uh, my mother was my Mary and that's why I needed you. But anyway, so here, um, the, 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 um, we're seeing her formed and here God is his spouse. He, from a child, he's with her and she's so intelligent and she's so amazing. And just looking at this and her innocent, like just, ah, oh, I, and then he talks about the boys, the loveliness of the boys. And I didn't quite get into that, but, um, oops. I, I think they were like angels. No, no, you know no. How sometimes there are angels about us and we just don't know they're angels. No, no, they no. These were besides Anne, about six female relatives with their children. Remember, oh, these yeah, okay. That was more in the future. That was one. Yeah. These people traveled in bands of people, especially when they were yeah. women. So they were traveling and they remember they're going to do, they're going to the temple and this is very important. So their family's all coming. It's like going to be a huge celebration too, in some sense. So Anne, about six female relatives with their children and some men accompany them. So here, Joachim, guided by the beast uh, upon which his child Mary sometimes rode. Like, can you see that little child Mary up on the little beast, you know, whatever donkeys or whatever they're, they're riding? Just like imagining it. So here she's in a yellowish gown and a large veil. Because remember, they wore veils to keep the sand out. And um, just like they still do in the Middle East, a lot of those women still wear those things. Even yeah, protection for your hair, your face. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons. So um, so uh, it just was like the prophet boys behind her. They were rode and singing, you know, these band of people singing like I could just see it. They were singing the Psalms. Yeah. And they uh, even said the number. I think it was number 49 or something. 40. And I don't know what they mean by Mary saw those boys, but she said nothing about it. She was perfectly silent and recollected in self. I mean, I don't know exactly what they're saying there, but, I, you know, I I just know. I think that they were probably angels that no one else saw. Maybe, maybe. Because they said that, uh, um, Anne said that there's something supernatural. Yeah. I, I mean, said Anne said right. there's something supernatural about them, and I guess no one else saw them, but she did. Yeah. So then we come. Maybe she always was all her life. Very tapped into the supernatural. Yeah. Um, the journey. This is what I like to look at. You froze a little. Are you still there? You're frozen. Okay. Now you're not. Yeah, um, maybe all her life. She was surrounded by angels all her right. life. I'm sure. I'm, no doubt. It's still saying my connection's unstable. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, the, uh, so Always when I look at these journeys, I think about the people and here's the typography, the topography or whatever you say, the, the surrounding environment, the journey's difficult because they're going over mountains and in valleys and, you know, like the, the, the later, the chilling mists and dews, remember they're sleeping outside and, you know, the, what they have to deal with the weather and the, the, the environment. So just all of that, um, so uh they came up they came up at an inn. So apparently they would stop at inns. So I don't know if they always did, but you know, I don't know how that works. But again, I saw the holy travelers. So here's these are holy travelers. They're you know, so just looking at this, looking deeply and looking at all her family coming. Um then it says the teachers questioned her and were struck with all her answers. Mention made of the wisdom of another maiden who had not long since returned to the temple. So here she's taking place of an older maiden, which 15 is considered older than because, you know, they die. I don't know. They just they seem to go into these these temples but then come back out again so she's taking place and then when they said Susanna and that she was one of the followers of Jesus I'm like oh yeah I do kind of vaguely remember something hearing the name Susanna right Jeanette isn't there a Susanna around Jesus we've heard this name before now I vaguely remember now something about a Susanna 
traveling with him. I don't remember, but maybe so now we need to look a little more closely. Yeah. See how these details bring this out. So yeah. he, he later followed Jesus, Susanna. And he, Very interesting. Yeah, she was on this trip as a young lady with with his mother when she was young. So she had to be very old following Jesus. A lot of very old women followed Jesus too. So um, so here, um, that's the thing, trying to put in ages, times, you know, and you and and they don't tell dates, so you have to figure it out with little things. Well, because these are visions she had, so they could right. be any date really we just know that she was young right but, but, but when she just... mentions a woman named Susanna and she was a young girl teenager like young girl we know she has to be old by the time she's following Jesus because of lifetimes you know oh yes definitely. even though Mary was 14 when um when she um uh when she um you know, had Jesus, this is that was very young. But if you think about it, back then, look at how young yeah. she was when she went to get the presentation three and, a, and three months old. Right. And, and then at 10 years, you know, at that, having Jesus. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense that that would be the next. Yeah. And in between, she's doing things like this, like we're getting to see, we're getting to fill in the gaps and the things of her we don't know. And I yeah. find it so fascinating. The clothing we're getting to see, the environment, the way they live, the way they did things, you know, it just is so fascinating. So, um, so the young girls carried beautiful fruits and garments as presents for the child. She's given presents by other children. Like she was revered from the time she was very young. So she knew all this was coming. She had to have known when the angel came to her and said, you know, you and I would be like, what? No, I'm going to be a virgin. No, she knew she was part of a bigger plan. She knew this from the time she was a teeny tiny girl. So it gives you some real insight into her mindset of the Annunciation, because that's mostly what we hear, the Annunciation. And she's, by the time we meet her, she's four, you know, she's 13 years old, but here we're getting to see a little bit more. So, um, so look, they're describing once again, Jerusalem, the paths, um, and, and, uh, and where they're going along and like seeing all this, you know, I'm not going to ever go to the Holy land. To be honest, I would be afraid to. Um, and I look at things like that one cruise, the portugal.com or whatever, I'll put it in here. That was always the one I was going to go on. Um, and I, I couldn't do it because I couldn't afford to take my mom with me. Cause I, you know, I, I would even, like to go. Yeah. If I came, like, would you go? Yeah, but it's just, too, it, it, it's anyway, it's just something I always I would go, do, but I felt guilty because of my mom, even though I made a lot of money back then, I, I couldn't have afforded both of us. Cause it's like thousands of dollars. My son's always like, mom, you're someday, but you know, traveling, it's just, I get, you know, I travel across here and I'm like, oh, <laughs> so I can't see myself traveling cities away, you know, um, even you and I together, Jeanette, oh, we would be a mess. <laughs> you know? We'd end I'd up be holding on to you. Trouble. You'd be holding on to me. We'd be in some kind of trouble. <laughs> I'd be like, these two ditches, let's see what we could get from them. <laughs> oh, we'd be a mess. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I see, I know when you go to Ireland, you're going with your husband and his, and, and your daughter and your daughter's, uh, husband's family. And, you know, so I know you're going to be safe when you do that, but you know, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, um, so here, okay. So just listening to all this stone, like stones, stone arches, like to me, that's like, I love that quaint look. So looking at all this, just, oh, I just love this description in these little places. Um, so here they are traveling along and we're seeing all this. They're, 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 they're coming through the sheep's gate and we hear about the sheep's gate and the temples about the sheep's gate. Like it's all coming into play. And many dealers, we see all these little like almost flea market-ish like booths, which 
uh, me and my grandma would loved all the little flea markets. So I could just see this and how much I would have loved to go through these little streets, you know? Um, so, and there's all these priests, they're like celebrities to us, you know, maybe not the normal person, but, um, old Rome was indeed, uh, pleasantly like not so steep. Its streets were more lively. Like I can picture it like, you know, like, like those apps that we were talking about people are doing for exercise. Now they're getting to walk virtually through these lands. Like I could just see us doing this. So anyway, um, the slaughtering, oh, listening about the slaughtering is so hard. Um, the slaughtering of the animals. I just, I just, oh, it just hurts my heart. So yeah, this was very, um, just very amazing. Oh, and then here, I thought it was interesting how she said, um, first of all, let me just say this. There's, she's talking about the smelling vaults in the furnaces, um, you know, she's talking about the, the, the temple, but we're, we're there in our senses, both our sight, our smelling, the feeling like we can really get that. This writing is so descriptive. And, um, some people don't like real descriptive writing. They just want to get to the point, which I'm normally like that, but, but this, but this is different. We're talking about yeah. Mary and Jesus and the biblical times. I want to know everything possible about everything to do with the biblical times. Cause to well, me, those were the most sacred, beautiful times. Well, when I was young, let me tell you something. My mother, um, you know, she, she, she veered off because my mother was so intellectually curious, you know, and she had this book, women who run with wolves. And she was teaching me a little bit about the myths. My mother was, you know, uh, uh, highly intelligent and, and extremely, my mother was a very interesting person, but anyway, um, she, um, had this book, women who run with wolves and, you know, a little too feminist. I wouldn't even, you know, but, but uh, the myths, um, a lot of the feminists were reading that kind of stuff. Um, but really, really what they're looking for is God. And, and they should be reading this stuff. But at the time, that's what we were reading. And that book, when I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like eating ice cream, but in a book, that's what this is feeling like to me, eating ice cream. You know, a fat girl's dream is ice cream all the time. We love ice cream, us fat girls, you know? Oh, I prefer pizza. Oh, I love pizza too. Don't get me wrong, but pizza, I, I haven't had pizza in a lot. When I eat pizza, it's very careful now because pizza is one of my favorite foods. No, me I'm too. an ice cream. Yeah. I know. That's why you making all that dough. I'm like, Oh, I can't look at it anyway. Cause <laughs> dough is where I gain weight. I have to be very, very careful with bread and dough. My, my son used to say, Oh, does he have a beer belly or a bread belly? Because fat people, they'll, if they're drinkers, they're going to have a beer belly. Or if they're eaters, they're going to have a, a, a bread belly. He said that to me years ago. And ever since then, that's what I always think about my belly. It's a bread belly and I hate it. But anyway, I don't want to hate my body, but you know how it is. Um. So anyway, so I see this and I think um, uh, we're smelling this. We're hearing this. But then she says this. I never felt at home in the temple. For I could never find it a place well suited for prayer. Well, first of all, the temple, they're killing animals. So I think that violence has to be in the air. I mean, even if they're doing it supposedly for sacrifice, there's, you know. The I, smell. I, Ugh. Yeah, I, I hate to be new age-ish, but I believe in, in energies and, you know, you know how they say. So I just, I'm like, so th I'm thinking, well, maybe that's why she could never find it a place well suited. Cause she talks about her being repulsed by the, um, the, the quantities of blood and she found the constant slaughtering repulsive. And I have to say, Jesus came, thank God he came because those poor animals were so, you know, oh, terrible. Um, so the wonder, and even like the little birds, you know, even the poor people were catching the birds because that was their offering. Oh, um, geez. And then, so that makes me think too of Jesus and Mary or, or, or Joseph 
and Mary and Mary were poor by that time. Remember, he was supposed to be the, the, the legal king, but Herod was appointed a puppet king. The real king was sought after to kill, which was St. Joseph. And we learned that from our St. Joseph consecration as we learned. So that. it makes sense why he was chosen. And it makes sense why they were poor and they were using little animals to sacrifice. It's like, okay, why were they using animals to sacrifice? Look, and family had money. Like, how could they? It's because they were being, because all of these things have to be congruent and make sense in stories. And so when, I, when I'm a big story person, so when, when, when I think about it, it's like, well, how can that be? How, like, but those apocryphal texts tell us one thing, that tradition about, about Anne's family and, and, and Joachim, they had money. So it all is making sense. And then they, then her, she goes out on her own with Joseph. She's given to him as a wife. I don't know how, we know how long Anne was around, but we don't hear much about her. So we really don't know as we may learn as we go. That's what's so interesting. So so here we are, um, you know, they're poor and that's why they're slaughtering these, these little animals, you know, and I think, thank God Jesus came to stop all this slaughtering. So I just, I just found this fascinating in so many ways. It brings us to, to Mary's life, you know, those 13 years before we meet her, we're getting a little glimpse. Now, let me just say, we're going, we only have to 13 before we start getting into Jesus and we're at 10. The next tomorrow will be the entrance. Well, tomorrow we have an event. We're going to the divine mercy event. So I don't know if we're still going to do it. I mean, I think we have time, but we'll see. Um, so we have here the entrance into Jerusalem. So this is the end of their journey. We're going to be coming into Jerusalem next time. And then the next day, although we may read, okay, no, these are long. Okay, Mary's entrance into the temple. So we're going to read next time her entrance into Jerusalem, then her entrance into the actual temp temple and the offering. And then- Didn't we read that today? No, no, they're getting oh, today ready. was they're, the on the, they're on the way to go to it. Oh, they're okay. talking about it. They're getting all their support. Oh, this is the journey. The this journey the we journey. read, exactly. the journey to the temple. Okay. Exactly. So then we have them entering Jerusalem and then going into the temple. And then um, they're looking at the Pharisees and the priests and all that we're going to be looking at. It's a short three page thing. We might add that on to one of the, the, the things. Uh, we may read that with one of the others because it's only three three teeny pages like this. Then John is promised to Zachary. So we're going to get to see John. We're about to meet John the Baptist as a as a child. And um, and then we're into the Holy Incarnation, guys. So we got a lot to look forward to in the next couple of days. So get okay. ready. Yeah. So get ready, folks. Okay. That was a good reading and um, Jeanette is dealing with something and she will let me know what happens with that and uh, all that. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. God willing. Bye-bye. Bye. Whoops, sorry. Takes me a minute to find the stop button.